Hello and welcome back to Spect. Today we'll be continuing from our last video where we looked at if Kill Team was right for you to play. Now this is a continuation for the new guys which are just starting out from Warhammer Conquest and also for experienced members who just want to give this a try. I call them veterans. In the last video we found out that hobby time was really important and I'll show you further how to save more hobby time in this video. But before we do that, uh, if you can kind of subscribe that would be fantastic. If you like the content of what I'm doing here, just give me a thumbs up. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithms and them finding videos, which can be helpful for new starters. Uh, and then also at the end of the video, if you do feel so, uh, please put down a comment or suggestion. And that normally kind of tailors the direction of the channel so I can find out what you're interested in. And I always get back to your questions and answers. The question is really here is, have you found the right play team for you? Have you found the right squad? Have you found the right play style? And there are a variety of different styles depending on what you're looking for. Um, because it's not just about having, you know, one or two armies that you already have and then putting them into kill team. Because their roles don't quite function the same. Um, and it's also not about just having the, the teams which are always winning. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the right army for you. Yeah, it's fun to win all the time, but when you keep giving people the feel bad deeds, they don't want to really want to play with you anymore. Um, so we have to figure out something for that because it can deter new starters and also it's not just about what you've got in in a box set and hey let's just go with that uh, at the end of the day that's just what comes with the set it doesn't necessarily mean it's right for you so I'll just run through effectively how I find what was right for me and then hopefully you can apply that for you um, so when I first got into Warhammer uh, Overall, the thing that drew me to it uh, was a recognition of, you know, some of the characters, not so necessarily the actual characters, but the the archetypes of the creatures. Like it was very quick for me to figure out that these guys were, even though they're not necessarily based on aliens, but like the gene stealer, like an alien type race, which kind of like swarm everything, and I recognise that, and it's quite easy to identify with. Then it was that hit of rule of call. Cool. So find the models that look really good from that faction and then start working in with them. So this was from the uh, Death Watch Overkill box. So just give you an example of what I mean. And it looked so good. It was so interesting. I was like, right, okay, let's go for this. And I started to build an army surrounding that. Now that was before Kill Team. So effectively you had to buy in quite a lot of models just to make a start. Once you find out if they're HQ units or if they're specialist units or they can only be paired with certain others which can cost you a lot of time, a lot of money especially if you're just painting everything up and at that point I don't even really know if I like the army I just like that one model and now I'm kind of forced into a pattern of having to buy to kind of get an army to play so rather than going through that just take your time and think back and reflect on the things that you enjoy so one of the sources I use quite often is just what are my other hobbies? What do I enjoy? Um, you know, I'm an avid comic book fan. Uh, I like to draw artwork. I like reading books, sci-fi books. I like a little bit of history, discovery. Um, all those kind of things. I mean, depending upon yours, if you combine it, you start to see things quite obviously that reflect in the models which are in front of you. Because they're being created by people which have the same kind of passions that you do and their tells start to show. Um, even if you look at the names of the Space Marines, you can start telling that the person that's created those has a real kind of interest in like Roman history. So, um, before I go any further <laughs> down that route, I just want you to take time to just have a look around, even around your room, your space that you're in now, and see what you're really passionate about. And once you see that, you'll start to see the things you're drawn to. It might just be Dune that you're drawn to, or a particular issue of Transformers or something. And if you are, you can already tell the kind of styles that you, you might be liking. You know, whether it's that survivalist character, that ranger kind of character. Or if it's a robot, you might like, uh, like I don't know, obviously Transformers for me. Um, but you might like Mechanoids, so you might like Power Armor, Dreadnoughts, all these kind of things. So, if you start with that angle first of all more than likely you'll start trying to find or well, you start moving towards an army that you like the look of uh, that you like to paint that you like to enjoy now 
This doesn't mean that it'd be the right army necessary to win every single contest, but it'd be the right army for you to spend your hobby time in because you feel it's well invested. Because there's nothing worse than, as I said before, starting that time, investing, taking time to paint a model, and yeah, you enjoy it, but you never put it on the tabletop. You don't get to play it. You don't even put it on your shelf because there's not enough of that type or you're just really kind of annoyed and frustrated that you bought that thing. Okay, so that's the rule of cool. So take that into account when we're going into the next stage. Now you've established what you like uh, about your hobby, your interest, where it lies and where it moves towards. Let's go through and take a look at the armies. Now, before I go through the armies, there's a few things. Uh, each armies have different box sets that come out that you can buy and they range from about um, I think it's 1850 to about 30 pounds and it comes with the uh, skirmish cards they're like flash cards to tell you what the character does and experience cards so you can build them up uh, it comes with a bit of terrain models and I if I remember rightly uh, token sheets uh, so you can use those and that's fantastic but before purchasing those Make sure that you use the guidance of your hobby preference, so make that decision uh, before buying. Now I'm not going to show you the rules, as I may have said already, but we're just going to have a look at the armies, and when I look at them, I'm just going to tell you effectively what their characters look like to me, not what they necessarily are, or what they do. But if you haven't played before, that will give you an idea of the style, and if that rings true to you, or if that is an interest of, to, uh, of yours. And then you can start getting closer into the law and get more information. Okay, so let's move through. Um, you've got your rules, your setup, examples of play, missions, choosing your kill team, building them, the different aspects of what they are. And here we go. It's making a start. So, uh, the first grouping we have here is the Adeptus Astartes. Uh, and effectively, these are guys are just like uh, the design reminds me of like Iron Man uh, with a massive machine gun. And I think that people which are interested in power armor, uh, which are people on the inside, even like the old school rifts, uh, Samus power armor, if that's the kind of thing that you like, then these guys will be for you. Yeah, Captain America with bolt gun. <laughs> okay, you're probably going to hear Agra about that. That's what the way it comes across to me. Okay, uh, Death Watch, these guys uh, just like, I don't know, what's the best way to say it, SCP, secure, contain and protect uh, the X-Files of the internet, um, but also with the same kind of abilities of Space Marine, uh, their abilities, what they can do, Grey Knights, um, these guys come across like Paladins, given psionic powers, um, and combined with the ability of a priest to do exorcism. Uh, their strengths that they pretty much fight against demons, but that's how they come across a very dark soulsy's look. Dark soulsy. <laughs> okay, Astra Militarium. Um, straight away, these guys come across as generic soldiers. Um, the more recognisable to modern day starship troopers. Um, when when they're just fighting off the swarms, that's your thing right there. So you already see there's like a massive amount of characters which you can relate to right away. And there are different sub-factions of each. Um, um, this guy, uh, Adeptus Mechanicus, very cyberpunk looking. Um, you can just tell by the cogs, the gauges, the bronze. You know, that's what the, the way this one comes across to me. Maybe different to you. Definitely cyborg in the greater parts. So if that's your thing, right there. Let's continue on again. Some lovely artwork in here, by the way. Um, Heretic Astartes, okay, Space Marines, add spawn, uh, give you random mutation, different effects, lots of spikes, these guys are the extra metal, not new metal, metal, alright, let's continue on, uh, Death Guard, if you've already, you've probably already got these, um, these just basically come with the, um, a lot of the Dark Imperium box sets, and also if you've got the Warhammer Conquest. So you'll be familiar with these, but these are like zombies, um, the undead, 
that's what they come across bloated, diseased, gross uh, Dr. Pimple Popper. <laughs> yeah, just don't don't um, don't watch what's eating dinner. Thousand Sons. Um, these guys just look well they, the way they come across. It's very kind of regal, high priest, Egyptian high priest, um, with power weapons. Uh, if you are like a, a follower of each of these squads, please don't get offended by my quick descriptions. This is just to give people which are new to the system an idea of what they're looking at and also like a subtext of how they play. The Osarian, Osarian, if I got that right, um, let me know. If not, hey, let me know. Uh, these guys are like elves, very rangery, snipers, long range, quick moving, um, Legolas with a laser rifle. That's how they come across. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, if you always like to play the ranger in D&D, &D, then uh, I think that's your your person there, or your squad there. Uh, Drukhari, or Dekra High, which I have it's pronounced. Um, these guys are like, how can I say, the best bet would be uh, Hellraiser, very pleasure and pain. Um, you can see almost like sadomasochist kind of style armor. Uh, moving on, we have Harlequins. So Harlequins, uh, Joker meets Spider-Man. Dexterous, fast, colorful. Um, very rewarding for painting, if that's your mainstay. Necrons, very Terminator looking like. Um, I'll be back. Unstoppable, keep returning. I think Terminator skeletons when I see this. So if those are your kind of things, then there's your crew right there. So let's continue. As I said, I don't want to hover onto the rules, so you know, uh, Article Thirteen is a real thing. Uh, <laughs> then we have orcs. Um, these set of orcs, I know they normally have fantasy orcs, because when you think of maybe the Orokai, Lord of the Rings, uh, maybe even Warcraft, there we go, uh, they have them. Uh, but let's see, these guys come across more like they want to fight and scrap all the time. Think of um, football yobs, there we go. They have fun fighting and it is what it is. Alright. Tau. Mech, power armor, uh, new frontiers, futuristic style looking weaponry. Uh, that's what these guys are about. And if that is your thing, then again, these ones will be the ones to start collecting with. Um, I'm not going to go through also what they have in each collector's box. Uh, and I'm sure that you'll look at that when the time comes before purchasing just on the shelf. I might go through them in the future. Tyranids, swarms, um, Creatures, insects, aliens, uh, Zerg, that's where these guys fall into. And the last group which is here is the Gene Stealer Cult. Now, Gene Stealer Cults are my personal favourite. Uh, I enjoy the models, I like them, they are awesome, they do their thing. But um, as a kill team, it, they win when they win, they don't, it's not a major stress, but the point is I have fun painting them, creating them, molding them, and mutations. But anyway, let me continue. Um, the main focus here is that they are the underdogs, they are the street cleaners, they come across like um, Fight Club when they're actually kind of subverting all the industries and businesses and bring them down from the inside. If you like that kind of thing, these guys are for you. So that was kind of like a quick overview of all the different types of creatures and models um, and army sets that you can buy so far for the kill team which is in this book now that just applies to just trying these out and not necessarily buying whole armies because the way they play on the kill team will be familiar but not exactly the uh, same roles that they play in a, in a larger game so don't worry about that for those of you which are experienced, which already have these models, and even though they might not be coloured the same way as issued in the book, and if you play 40k you recognise that different um, colorations have different effects within the rules, uh, because it denotes the, the faction they're from, or the sub-faction, it doesn't actually have an effect in kill team. So it doesn't matter if you have like a 
you know, scrap amount of models, you all bring them together and then you just use them all in Kill Team, it's okay. As long as they look familiar, it's fine. I mean, if I turned up with like a, a Lamenter and, I don't know, a Blood Angel, I don't think anyone is going to get upset. They understand the premise of what's going on here because they're on the same team, same squad, and that's it. Okay? So let's move on to the next stage. Okay, so continuing the um, examples of trying to find the right team for you. Uh, one of the things that I find important, and I'm just using these examples, is the complexity of the model and also how much color work there is to do for the model. So if that's your challenge and a thing that you really enjoy, then finding that out in the beginning is actually quite important uh, because then that can stop you from kind of having simple models that you don't feel fulfilled when you're painting and then plan them because you don't fulfill, feel fulfilled. <laughs> you don't kind of have as much passion for the model. You just want to move it as quickly as possible and it can take away from the fun of the game. So find something with a kind of level of complexity that you will also enjoy if that's your main focus in the passion. One of the last categories I want to look at is those people that just basically play the game and just want to win all the time. Now, if that's your thing, that's fine. There's, there's no judgment there. Um, some people might not want to play against you because, you know, if you're only picking teams that no one else has a chance of winning against, then there's going to be no fun for them. They already know the outcome. Um, but at the same time, if you have spent that time learning the variables of the dice and kind of mitigating those chances, that's not luck. That's hard work. And if you're taking it to that tournament level, that's fine. Uh, one thing that I'll say will be to your advantage is selecting a team which has either just come out or that basically has a strong internet presence and then tweaking that list. And what I mean by that is when Kill Team first came out, a lot of 40k uh, hobbyists already had a lot of models and they just selected from those models to make their own team because that's their team that they're all to and that's the team they want to play. And when they played it, they played it against a team that they hadn't played against very much and that was a Gene Stealer cult. And the way that they work in this book is a lot different, and their weaponry is a lot more powerful. Um, the rock cutters, uh, the, the saws, and the rock drills, all of them had effects that either removed characters from play instantly, or they continuously did damage until they stopped. And that could instantly eliminate a character anyway. And most people wasn't aware of that, most people didn't understand. And uh, um, one of the guys at the Wargaming Unification, Byronid, um, I'll put a link up here somewhere he actually broke that down quite well uh, and basically shows you how effective they was and then people came back to the Gene Stealer cult which meant that anybody else that had figured out a way to deal with the Gene Stealer cult already because they actually played against them until that time um, which wasn't very hard figured out the effectively the new meta the new champions of the game and um, I think currently that sits at Tau uh, the way that they have their shield drones. So that's where that comes in. If you're taking an internet list, just find what the current best thing is since sliced bread and then see what you can magnify. Remove one or two models, change them up for something slightly different, put in a new weapon and then give that a go and take note of everything that happens there so you kind of got yourself like a, a feedback loop to improve and move forward. As I said, there's nothing wrong with that being your passion. If that's your thing, that's fine. Um, you know, just try to balance it out and understand the difference between friendly games and, um, you know, just totally decimating someone as much fun as it may be. <laughs> okay. All right, let's bring this together. Okay, so we've taken all the aspects that we've got together. Um, so looking at the rule of call, cool, uh, what set of model appeals to you, the play style that appeal, uh, appeals to you, um, even the painting challenge and the external challenges from the game, you know, how much do they mean to you, how important are they to you. And even for the person that wants to go out there and just make a name for themselves, win competition, that's fine, we've looked at that. We didn't really touch on price, um, but as I may mention in a previous video, there's plenty of different ways that you can kind of secure prices and make sure things are cheap for you. Um, but bring that all together, you should be able to look back and now reflect and see which army is right for you or which faction is suitable for you and once you've done that you should be a lot happier in play in motion in everything that you do with them and again it's about securing your passion 
and your hobby time in the right places. Otherwise, it just leads to resentment and frustration. Um, I've had so much fun with this um, that I will be continuing playing. Uh, it's, I kind of do miss larger style play. But at the end of the day, I could get three or four games in just playing this alone. So I'm really happy with that. Now, if you guys have any other tips or ideas on how to focus and choose your army to make sure it's right for you, uh, please put the comment below uh, and let me know. Again, thank you very much. I've enjoyed our time. This has been Spect. PC out. So as always, I try to leave you with uh, pictures of what my current projects are. If you want to find out more, you can always find me on my Gmail, uh, contact me on Discord, and also I tend to post a little bit on uh, Instagram. So if you like what you see, and also want to know more about my upcoming projects, uh, subscribe, contact me on the other forums, and we'll go from there. Oh, it's playtime.